Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. Uh, it is February in the North Carolina Piedmont and I'm out mushroom hunting but there isn't a tremendous amount of uh, diversity and variety in our, um, you know, big fleshy mushrooms. And so I'm looking at a lot of uh, jelly fungi and crusts. I'm also spending some time practicing my leaf identification. So I'm trying to make the most of a beautiful February day. Um, and I want to show you a couple of things that I found. Uh, primarily, I want to show you the difference between a very common uh, genus Sterium, and uh, there's a couple of different species of it, and then uh, Trimedes versicolor, which is commonly called the turkey tail fungus. This is uh, a fungus that people forage for medicinally. I say people because I don't collect and use turkey tail, but it is something that people uh, pursue quite actively. It's very, very common, uh, but they do look rather similar, so I'll show you the differences. I also have a third species that looks fairly similar, so you have these sort of concentric growth zones. This is uh, Tremides betulina, and I'll, I'll show you the differences between these. Uh, I also want to talk to you about a couple of jellies that I've found and uh, then show you a couple of leaves. Uh, if you're interested in your uh, hardwood identification, that's really helpful for mushroom hunting. My two favorites are uh, oak trees and beech trees, and so I'm going to show you a couple of those. Anyway, let's get started with uh, identification for Trimedes versicolor. It is a uh, wood decomposing fungus and it grows on hardwood. You'll see it uh, most times of year. It is highly variable in its color. So this one is a fairly uh, pale specimen and you have these sort of uh, really distinctive concentric growth zones. It tends to be furry and hairy on top just a little bit. It's kind of felty almost. And uh, in the case of this particular specimen, you have a really uh, sort of nice, uh, you know, orangey brown color. One of the things about Tremedes that you'll uh, notice is, you know, you have these zones, but oftentimes like a really kind of nice uh, layering of, of really thin zones right at the edge. So, uh, you know, from the top you have this sort of, uh, you know, interconnected, uh, you know, shelf of fruiting bodies. Underneath you have a porous surface. So Tremedes versicolor is a polypore. Basically the spores come out of, uh, you know, a lot of little pores, so they don't have gills, uh, which is sort of what you think of with uh, a lot of your classic mushrooms, like what you find in the store. So, uh, Trimedes versicolor, this is a, again, a lighter specimen, so I'll show you uh, a couple of different forms you'll uh, see it in. So very frequently uh, Trimedes versicolor will be sort of gray uh, and this is a really good example of sort of the gray ground, uh, brown bands that is really pretty on this species. Uh, often when they get this color though they're also really worn out so you uh, you know see still some of that white porous layer but a lot of decomposition and things happening there. Um, so that's, that's two of them. I think I had Oh, here's a nice one. This is uh, sort of an in-between gray, uh, and you have little uh, bits of sort of green as well. So you'll a lot of times see uh, turkey, uh, turkey tail in sort of a dark brown uh, to green brown, and then that lighter color. The best turkey tails of all, and unfortunately I haven't found any, in cooler weather sometimes, well, actually any time of year, but in my experience, in cooler weather, you oftentimes these get these really dark, almost blue, uh, like steel blue colored uh, turkey tails and they're just remarkable great for photography uh, but you know this is a species that is ubiquitous it grows any time of year so it is something to keep an eye out for uh, even if it's you know um, not really mushroom time or at least prime time for uh, you know the mushroom fruiting situation okay so we've talked about Tremedes versicolor uh, I'm losing my my um, my safety orange here so we'll see if I can keep that intact uh, so I want to talk to you about this uh, Sterium, and this uh, is maybe Sterium hirsutum, maybe Sterium austria, uh, or maybe some other in a Sterium complex. And so there's a number of different species. You can call them all parchment fungi. I tend to just not worry too much about sort of the uh, different and integrating species uh, in Sterium. 
They're very, very common also uh, growing on, um, you know, wood, and you'll see them in these very large uh, flushes of, you know, essentially, it looks like you have a lot of little interconnected pieces of parchment that are uh, attached to a decomposing log. Now, Sterium, uh, as you can see, it has these concentric growth zones. It's not nearly as, uh, you know, hairy or furry as Trimedes versicolor. Uh, it, and the reason I'm kind of tempted to call this Sterium hirsutum is uh, it is a little hirsute, meaning it's a little bit on the furry side. Um, but also, you know, Sterium, usually when you first see it, it comes up in sort of uh, orangey and brown colors. It sometimes looks like, a, you know, really bright uh, sort of um, burnt orange, and that's very, very pretty, especially when you have a huge bunch of them. But as they mature, you oftentimes start to see, uh, you know, they turn brown, and then in this case, you have a lot of green going on. That's probably just algae on top of it. Uh, but, you know, either way, uh, the main thing that makes this quite distinct from turkey tail is that the um, common name, parchment fungus, is appropriate because you have a very smooth uh, undersurface and you could almost, you know, write a little mouse-sized ransom note on it or something similar, whereas, uh, you know, you can very clearly see on um, Trimedes Versicolor, it's more like sandpaper and very porous and white. So, you know, you um, oftentimes it's sort of this light brown color and yeah, sometimes it's not quite as variegated, like this one has a lot of differing color on the underside of it. Uh, so Sterium is harmless. Um, you know, there's a lot of complexity in the taxonomy emerging from what I understand. So I'm going to wait a little while and see where things fall. Uh, but you know, this is also referred to as the uh, false turkey tail very commonly by people for obvious reasons. So uh, that's two uh, species. The third that I want to show you, and unfortunately this isn't uh, nearly as like large and magnificent as this species often is, uh, this is called Trimedes betulina. So it's in the same genus as Trimedes versicolor. Uh, betulina is uh, in relation to betula, which is the, uh, which means beach. And so these mushrooms are decomposers. You'll find them primarily on downed, uh, you know, beach um, sticks. And so, you know, you find this sort of gray smooth stick and you'll oftentimes find uh, Trimedes betulina growing on it. So uh, unlike uh, you know our uh, turkey tails and our uh, sterium, Trimedes betulina tends to be a lot more like very uh, nicely shaped and scal you know not nearly as as uh, waffly on the edges. You do have concentric growth zones. It tends to be um, you know oftentimes more gray and light in color, and then it really does turn green. It gets a lot of algae on it, um, and I think in part because it's very very furry. So you know Trimedes versicolor is a little furry, and oftentimes uh, Trimedes betulina is hella furry. Uh, but the main thing you know that, like if you're looking at them from the top you have a lot of sort of, um, you know, uh, superficial similarities, but if you flip Trimedes betulina over, it does not have a porous undersurface, it has gills. And again, this is not the best specimen because it's a little small and a little old. The gills are definitely sort of brownish in this case, uh, but when they're big, you know, they're these big chunky gills. And so um, that's a mushroom that, you know, is good for photography. I really like it and I'm a big fan of anything that grows on beach because it's, uh, it's a beautiful tree. So, speaking of things that grow on beach, I want to show you a couple of jelly fungi, starting with one that uh, is growing on a beach log. Uh, this is Exidia glandulosa, and Exidia is a genus uh, of jelly fungi. There are um, a number of them that are called jelly roll fungi, and some people make like candy out of them, and it's this whole thing. Uh, but Exidia glandulosa is uh, distinguished by the fact that it is a little jelly fungus, so it's, uh, you know, it doesn't like flop right off or anything. It's got a nice sort of wiggle to it, but it is sort of robust, especially as it starts to dry out. But when it's really fresh, you know, you have this nice little Exidia glandulosa, um, you know, uh, basically little clusters of it. And, uh, and they're sort of, um, you know, 
like bubbly instead of cup shaped. And so you have a lot of uh, jelly fungi that have, um, you know, little cups or are very waffly, whereas Exidia glandulosa is sort of uh, more these clustered lumps and bumps. Ooh, here's the best part. So, you know, this will dry out and just basically, uh, you know, turn sections of this beach stick, uh, you know, into sort of, um, well, it, it, you can see it right here. It doesn't really look so much like a fungus anymore, uh, but when it's fresh, it's really fun to, you know, wiggle and jiggle and it's got fairy energy, all that fun stuff. So we have Exidia glandulosa. Also, I guess while we're at it, we can talk about how to identify a beech tree. So uh, beech is super common um, in the Piedmont and it produces a lot of really cool mushrooms. So, uh, you know, I find a lot of chanterelles with them, a lot of hidden hedgehog mushrooms with them. So they're one of my like food go-to mushrooms, but they also have a ton of cool boletes that grow with them. So like we have a lot of these uh, mushrooms that look like a porcini, so they're big and fat and they have this beautiful like netted reticulation on their upper stems. And so there's a number of those species that are just, um, you know, love to grow with beech. So I am always on the lookout for beech groves. So you have, um, you know, a gray tree. Oftentimes, uh, you know, they get, when they're very mature, they almost look like elephants legs because you get these sort of uh, curves and whorls. But the thing that makes them really easy to identify is that they are, uh, you know, smooth barked. And so, you know, almost all bark out in the, the area that I live in is not smooth bark. It looks more similar to, you know, a beech or excuse me, a birch tree, except it doesn't, uh, you know, um, it doesn't peel off, but it's very smooth uh, to handle. Also, if you're, uh, you know, looking for beech groves, you want to become familiar with a beech leaf. It's one of the simpler formed leaves also of our different hardwood trees is just basically a little like teardrop shaped thing. You have, uh, you know, these uh, kind of cool racing stripe, um, you know, veins and it's uh, a little bit on the soft side, a little papery, but they decompo decompose very rapidly. And I like to kick through big piles of beech leaves because you can often unearth really cool mushrooms with them. So uh, we have our beach, uh, and I'm going to move on to the last jelly fungus that I have found. I'm glad that I spent a little bit of time uh, looking, you know, and thinking about this one. So this is a Dacrymyces species. Similar to our Exidia glandulosa, uh, it is just basically little lumps and bumps of, uh, you know, a uh, sort of orangey jelly that's on this pine stick. And Dacrymyces is sometimes mistaken for witch's butter, which is uh, Tremella mesenterica. And Tremella mesenterica, similarly, it's a jelly fungus that grows on wood, but it's much more sort of waffly and jiggly and you get larger fruiting bodies. And uh, Dacrymyces does like pine. And uh, so that's, that's kind of, um, or at least in this case, and I usually when I find them, um, they're on pine. Anyway, I oftentimes get them confused. I don't look very closely, but if you look and again, it's like this little bump or lump and it's not like a, a little, you know, uh, reaching hand of witch's butter, that's uh, you have a Dacrymyces species. And Dacrymyces is a genus that has a lot of different species in it. And I'm not um, expert enough to really dive into any of, or all of them. So um, I think that's all I really have to cover. I think the main thing that I would love for you to take away from this, if anything, is that Tremedes versicolor and uh, your sterium mushrooms do look different, not just because they have, uh, you know, these different undersurfaces, but also because, uh, you know, on the top you have uh, more of a furriness, a little bit uh, more of a tendency to get, uh, you know, scalloped and waffly in your uh, Tremedes uh, versicolor specimens. Anyway, it's been a million years since I've made a YouTube video. It's uh, super fun to be gearing up for the mushroom season. Also, if you're interested in a mushroom t-shirt that has uh, like PCB uh, circuits on it, I have um, made some t-shirts at mushroomanna.com. So if you're interested in something nerdy, uh, that is an option that is available to you. I hope you are well, and I can't wait uh, to go out mushroom hunting yet again and find more things.